Hi everybody, it's Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hanani and the Widow Recklehouse. And um, today I want to share with you, and hopefully I can do this without bursting into tears, <laughs> but I just wanted to share with you a couple of memorials that I made for my late husband Bill. Um, this coming Wednesday will be the anniversary of his auto accident and death, and um, it's just, it's been hard. <laughs> Um, I don't know, this whole month has been really hard, and I kind of decided, other than teaching, which, you know, I have to do, um, other than that, uh, you know, I still have my list of things to do, but if I don't get it done, then that's okay. I'm just being gentle with myself and allowing myself to do what I need to do, you know, to grieve, to think about Bill, to pray, and sometimes to just let my mind rest for a little bit and I've been been watching The Chosen which is very uplifting and so I don't feel like I'm wasting my time or pushing myself further into depression or anything like that um, and I think this has been good you know I think before there were times when I let myself grieve and then there were other times when I tried to ignore it or tried to push it down and stuff and I think that's only made things worse so I think this helped so I'm going to show you first what I made last year and I don't know when I made it. I don't know if it was around the anniversary of his death or not. But I was showing it to my friend, Pat Sakura, and she said, boy, you could do something like that, but bigger. And I thought, oh yeah. So I did something else. It's not quite like this. It's also a collage, but it's bigger and has a lot more stuff on it. Um, I did that. That's what I worked on yesterday for a lot of the day. So anyway, I just wanted to show you this one first because it's really small, so it's easy to show. and. Partly I'm showing you crafters to give you an idea and um, otherwise, you know, I kind of want to tell you a little bit about Bill. <laughs> it helps me, you know, to talk about him. So, okay, so starting at the top here, this is some of his yarn. He was a knitter. He knit sweaters. Um, he and his late wife, Beth, who died of breast cancer, they knit sweaters and they started out knitting for P Perry Ellis and then Ralph Lauren and... Uh, Bill Blast, and I can't remember who else, but um, they had a, a company, a whole bunch of people, and um, there's a lot to tell about that. I won't go into that because there's just so much, but this was kind of my theme verse for our relationship. I have found the one with whom my soul loves from Song of Solomon. You see that right there? Okay, and then here's a picture of Bill. That's one of my favorite pictures of him. I took that uh, a few days after we were married, um, we went out to Fairley Creek where he had, well near where he and Beth had had their house and um, it was just a great place to, for him to model some of his sweaters because um, I started an Etsy shop for him. And um, at that point, okay, so we didn't meet in person until three weeks before we got married. We got to know each other online and by telephone and a little bit by Skype for five and a half months before we met in person. And we knew already by the time that we met in person that we were going to get married. And um, in fact, he even had me bring two big suitcases to start moving in when, uh, when he flew me out to Maryland for the first time. So um, we just, gosh, we just knew like from the beginning. And I, I didn't recognize it at first. He asked me... He said, are you as sure about this as I am? And I thought, oh no, because I hate it when men, you know, propose too soon. I had that happen a couple times and broke up with the men. And I thought, oh no, I have to break up with him and I really like him. And then the thought just came to me, look inside yourself. And so I did and I knew, yeah, we belong together. And from that point on, you know, we just built up our relationship so that we would have a really good marriage. and. And it was, it was like a fairy tale marriage and a lot of people who knew us while he was alive, you know, while he was alive, they told us, it wasn't like just a oh, after death thing, but they told us that, um, that we had the best marriage of anyone that they had ever seen. And I really, I don't know if it was the very best in the whole world, but it was wonderful. It was just really perfect. And I feel good because I gave him his happily ever after. Um, so anyway, so the buttons, these are from sweaters. Uh, they're not from sweaters. They, he had a whole bunch of buttons. He had them in tubes. And, um, and 
these are what he put on sweaters. These ones are all wooden, but he has a bunch of them that are, in fact, I have some here that I'm using for crafts and stuff. Um, so like here are some of the ones that I'm working with right now, but there's like all different ones like these. I think these were his, these ladybugs, I'm pretty sure. Um, anyway, so he decided to retire from knitting a couple months before he died. It was in May and he passed away in July. And um, so he stopped knitting. He just finished the one that he was working on. <coughs> and I think he had, he had a whole waiting list, but he just had one more person who had paid and that one he didn't, he didn't get done. Um, so that man chose, was gracious enough to choose another sweater. And um, anyway, so he had told me to use his buttons for crafting and stuff and that, you know, if I thought maybe I could sell some of them because there's tons, you know what, I will probably use them all myself. <laughs> so don't, don't be looking for buttons for me, you guys. Um, it's amazing how quickly, you know, how many I use on a project. And they're just really special to me because they were his. And then I have a little bit of a hymn here. We loved music and we would send music to each other all the time. And then one of his tags from sweaters, we usually used a bigger tag, but sometimes we used the smaller one. So, and then the lace doesn't really have any significance. It was just cool. And then I sewed all that on rather than gluing it. So it's got, you know, all the stitches here. So that was the small thing that I made last year. And I, like I said, I'm not sure if I made it for the anniversary of his death or when. Um, I'm not sure how I would find out because I don't think I made a video of it. Okay, so here's what I did this year. Let me make sure it's all in the picture. Yeah, it is. Okay, so this is, it's, I did it on like a gallery wrap type of thing. And I'll try to share with y'all how I did stuff so that if you want to do something like it, you can. Um, this is sort of, I mean, I did paint some on it, but not a whole lot. And I stenciled some things. Um, it's kind of like a collage and it has some junk journal elements too. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to tell you about the things, but I'm also going to tell you some stuff about Bill while I'm doing this. Okay. So up here I have, I stenciled some hearts and I have, you know, some of the things about him or things that he was like, he was a banker. In fact, he even had a gun held to his head one time. Um, he was a bank manager. He was a husband. Um, he was an amazing husband. People called him Bill. He was the best. He had been a yarn salesman or fiber salesman before he and Beth started um, pattern craft is what they called it originally. Um, his granddaughter and I assume his grandson call him Pop Pop and also his great grandchildren. Um, he was a grandfather. He was a father. He was incredibly gentle, just a very, very gentle man and very kind. He was a knitter and just full of love. The most loving man that I ever knew. Um, I have a few places like this, little scraps that I've put in and even a big scrap here and another scrap here. I've got little scraps around and also hearts that I didn't write in that can be written in later. Um, oh, here, Billy Goat over here. <laughs> okay, so there's kind of a funny story with that. Uh, we met online and I had put in my profile that I don't believe in sex before marriage and, um, you know, the, really the main reason I put that in there, it was true, but I put that in there because I realized I was just looking for one man. I wasn't looking to be popular. And so I kind of wanted to scare away any men who weren't right. And so I put that in there and it did, you know, lots of men wrote to me and said, Oh, you sound like you're just like the woman for me, except for the sex before marriage thing. And I said, I'm not changing that <laughs> anyway. So, um, so I'm, I wanted to make sure before we started a relationship that he understood that. And so I said, you know, I don't believe in sex before marriage. And he said, well, I may be a horny old goat, but I know how to keep my hands off of women until the time is appropriate. <laughs> so I always called him Billy Goat after that. Um, let's see. Okay, so this is the bigger, here's, here's the smaller label like I had on the other one. And then here's the bigger level label. And some of this is a tribute to Beth also. I believe, if I remember correctly, that this was her calligraphy that they turned into this label. Um, Straight on till morning, that's from Peter Pan. It was one of Bill's favorite sayings and we have it at the end of our vows on the painting that I made of our vows. Um, so let's see, here's one of his, well, here's a star to go with straight on till morning and a heart. He really liked on my, 
um, on my junk journals, he really liked how I had like, I used a lot of his yarn and I used, I didn't like here, you know, I didn't cut the thread. I left it kind of a shabby chic thing. And so he would always say that my journals were hairy because <laughs> they had all this stuff sticking out all over the place. And I kind of felt like the hairier, the better that it was just, I like that to me. It's, it looks really, um, kind of shabby, you know, but it's neat looking. Okay, these are some of the things that I would imagine him saying, and um, so you are enough, have an open heart, choose to shine, make it count, stay strong, stay curious, keep moving forward. That was something that both of us really felt strongly about, was always move forward. Just even if you're just moving forward like half a step a day, you're moving forward. Life was meant for a great adventure, love you. Um, don't forget to fly just because attitude is everything. Do what you love. All you need is love. Be amazed. Live your dream with passion. Cultivate kindness. Be brave and be your beautiful self. I think I got all of them here. Okay, so those are all things that would be like the kinds of things that he would say. Um, all right, so then I've got some of his yarn here, and all these buttons all over, those are his, and I believe that they, that a lot of them were probably around when Beth was doing the knitting too. So um, so that's a tribute to her as well as the tags. You know, and really he's a tribute to her because like he told me, and this is really what made me feel safe with him originally when we first, I, th I think before we even talked on the phone, yeah, it was like while we were just writing to each other, he was telling me about Beth, and it just, I felt like, it's so weird, I can't really explain it, except this is the only way that I can say it, and it sounds really weird, but it was like she left her residue on him, and so I just felt like he was good and safe, like she was a witness to that. And I really believe that she had something to do with us getting together, you know? Because um, she loved him a lot. He really loved her. And he still loved her, you know, the whole time that we were married and stuff. And that wasn't a problem to me or anything. Um, he told me that she trained him for me. And I just always kind of felt like we were friends. And I kept her ashes on my desk. Um, and sometimes talked to her. <laughs> kind of like I talk to him now. Um, I, I still sometimes talk to her. So it was like, I felt like we were friends. Well, when he died, I don't think like that day, but you know, within a few days, I realized she trained him for me, like he said, and I held on to him and took care of him for her. And I gave him the happily ever after that she, she wanted for him to have. And, um, because, you know, we had talked just a few days, maybe a couple days before he died about how happy we both were with our marriage. And we were going through some really, really hard stuff, especially financially, but otherwise in, in relationships with some other people and stuff. And it was really, really difficult. But we, you know, when you have difficult things going on in a, you know, in your life, in a marriage, you can either pull apart from each other or you can press together. And we had decided, we had talked about before we even met in person, how we were going to promise each other that we were going to always press together during hard times. And we did. And that made such a huge difference. But so I know that he died being happy um, because our marriage made him really happy. And so now he's with Beth and, you know, she, I'm, I'm happy that he's there with her. And I also feel like, you know, there's no marriage in heaven. So it wouldn't be weird for us three to be together. <laughs> it's not like there's some weird thing going on or something. Um, you know, it's like she's kind of holding on to him and taking care of him for me too. Um, and it's, yeah, just really special. So she's just really, really special to me. Um, and I never met her. She passed away long before I met Bill, like about 20 years, I think. And, um, you know, and we talked about her a lot and I asked him questions about her all the time and he told me stories and stuff and I just loved her. So this is a tribute to her. He was a tribute to her too. So it's like, you know, I can't do this without having it also be about Beth. Okay, now, he loved butterflies. We both did. Um, 
and we would watch the butterflies and the bees quite a bit. I have a bee right here. We, um, we kept bees. We had one hive. We were planning to have more, but um, yeah, we just had the one. But we would sit out there and just watch the bees at the hive and stuff, and sometimes they'd take the hive apart, and we they were nice to us, you know, they were Italian honeybees, and so, um, you know, they were not aggressive or anything, so, you know, they were fine, they would fly all around us, and we didn't suit up or anything, and, oh yeah, and when we were getting Hawaiian, not Hawaiian, Italian honeybees, he said that they all sing opera, because <laughs> they were Italian, you know. Okay, so, um, all right, so then this is a place that can be written in later if I want to write like or glue pictures or something or write other things about him so this is like something to add to um, and then let's see let's look at the pictures okay so this one here you know how he's he's looking like he's got his shoulders up and his chest out um, he was trying to take care of three dogs <laughs> that were like just going kind of wild you can see bogey down here and I kind of think that they have the same expression. And the sweater that he's wearing was what he called the Varsity Classic. And I think that may have been like his favorite sweater. He wore that a lot and we sold like a, a ton of those. Um, okay, so this one here, um, he, he's wearing a um, shawl collared pullover and not quite the same color as this, even though it looks the same color in the picture, but it's very different. That was also the shawl colored stuff, either either cardigans or pullovers were very popular. Um, he's, his sweaters, you know, when we had our store on Etsy, we had people order from all over the world. We had the interpreter, the translator for the president of Taiwan order from us. We had um, a guy from Switzerland order from us. A guy from Scotland ordered from us, which seemed kind of funny. He ordered a cable sweater, and isn't that the place to get him? Um, and Ireland and France and you know we just had and of course all over the US and he made like these replicas where like people would send him a picture of like this one lady sent us a picture of her fiance's father wearing a sweater in the 1950s and so Bill made a replica of it he made a replica of Frank Chance's sweater he was the manager of the Cubs back in 1908 when they won the pennant the last time before 2000, whatever, 16 or whatever, when they won it again. Um, and there's a big story behind that. <laughs> um, okay, so this picture up here, you can barely see. Let me see if I can get it up to where you can see it. This picture that's really tiny of him right here. Um, he's pretty shaggy there. <laughs> okay, so the reason that he had his hair really long was because uh, we would watch this this series about John and Ab Abigail Adams every year because we just re really loved their romance, their story, and it was portrayed beautifully in this series. And at the end, the first time that we watched it, he just happened to say, and it had nothing to do with with the series, but he said, "You know, would do you like the way that I wear my hair or is there some other way that you'd like me to wear it? You know, I didn't figure out until after he died that he probably wanted me to ask him the same question. <laughs> well, I'm not very quick. Anyway, I said, you know, I love the way that the men had it during the time of the revolution where they had a ponytail and everything. And he said, okay, I'll grow it out. So he would, every year after watching that, he would grow it out for a few months. And then just when it got to the place where I could put it all into a ponytail, he'd get fed up with it and he'd get it cut. So he was, when he was killed, he was on his way to Maryland to take care of, we had renters um, who were going to buy the house, who are going to buy the house still. And um, he was going to get his hair cut up there <laughs> by Debbie, the lady who always cut his hair. So here, you know, it was really windy and his hair was long, so he looks pretty shaggy. He looks kind of like a little elf or something. It's kind of a cute picture. But we were up at, this was Valentine's Day. It was our last Valentine's Day together. We had gone up to Teleco where we had a shop and I had stopped to take some pictures and then I talked with a friend of mine there for quite a while, maybe like an hour, an hour and a half, and he was just going to go into the shop and knit. Well, I came over to the shop and he was sitting at the desk with his head in his hands and the lights were off. And I said, why do you have the lights off? And he said, because they turned off our electricity because we had forgotten to pay. 
and he was just really, really frustrated and depressed. And so, you know, we were driving, starting to drive home and he said, let's go up to Bald River Falls. And you know what? That ended up being one of our favorite trips. That was one of our favorite times. He loved Bald River Falls. I do too, but he really, really loved Bald River Falls. And so here he's right by Baby Falls, which is a quarter mile beyond that. And uh, it was the first time that he did videos himself for YouTube that I didn't you know, like do with him or help him with or anything. He just did it completely by himself while I was doing another one someplace else. And um, yeah, it just ended up being a really, really wonderful Valentine's Day. And then here where he's got boom, this is, you know, I had to cut out most of it to get to fit on here, but it's a photography backdrop with a um, superhero city. And I use it for my classes that I do online sometimes. Um, we had this up in our shop in Teleco along with a bunch of others, like one where it had a fire on the beach and there's a pirate ship in the background and stuff. And uh, people could take their pictures there. And if they took their pictures modeling one of our sweaters, then we gave them a discount because then we could use that, um, you know, for our shop and online and stuff. Uh, the turtle is here because he loved, he just loved animals. And, he, you know, so often there are turtles in the road in Kent County and he would always stop the car, get out, check traffic, go pick up the turtle and carry it over to where it was safe, you know, heading towards the water. And um, so I had to put that on here. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? Okay, so um, I also have, oh here, this is just a picture of him. There's a shadow across his face, but this, it was of both of us together, but I cut myself out. And then here he is working on his, on one of his knitting machines. Let me see, it's right here. Can you see it there? So it's kind of dark. Um, and then there's a little scroll here that's empty. Um, I'm not going to take the tie off. Anyway, it's it's blank inside, so it can be written on later. But I kind of wanted to give it, you know, I wanted it to be kind of three-dimensional. So um, let's see. And then this is one of his buttons, and it's on some dictionary paper, some of his yarn. Oh, this is some of his yarn also. And these are all his buttons and stuff. Um, Infinity, I love you forever, Infinity. This is one of the dry clean things from one of his tags. Oh, there's also a medium size thing here. Um, let's see, so then this, he had a sweater that he had made for my grandson. And he now has a great, great grandson that I know he would probably have loved making a sweater. For him too. Oh, this was our business card for Chester River Knitting Company. And then this um, is one of the sweaters that he made. This is a skipjack, which is a boat that's made specifically for the Chesapeake Bay. And he did, this is called Intarsia, where he knit the design right into it. And so um, that's that's the kind of thing that he did. A lot of them were very colorful, like he has a pheasant that was just beautiful. And he would do like people's yachts or their boats. And um, one of his favorite things to do was people's names in, you know, the flags that you put up as signals on boats and stuff. Um, and then here's a Rita Donnelly flip. At least I think it's, I think I was able to make it into a Rita Donnelly flip. Yeah. So I can put something in there and can also write in here and see I have the key to match these keys um, so yeah so I think that's everything on here I think I talked about all the pictures and stuff anyway I think this is just gonna be something that's gonna be really fun to look at and has a lot of memories and stuff and I feel like he's talking through these things because these are the kinds of things that he loved to say you know just things that would encourage you and kind of inspire you and stuff um, you know, and, and a lot of it was stuff he was quoting other people. It wasn't necessarily, you know, that he made it up or anything. Um, so, yeah, so that's it. So I love you all. Thank you for letting me tell about Bill and show you this. Um, it's made me a little happier today. And I would really appreciate your prayers. Wednesday, July 14th is the second anniversary of when he had his accident and died. All right, I love you all. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.